Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and this is Nature Play Lifestyle. I feel like it's been a while since we've been outside together. <laughs> that reminds me of like Nickelback, I think it was. Like, it's been a while. I'm definitely not a singer, but that's what it reminds me of. And like, I don't know if we want to go there today and talk about Nickelback. I don't think that's a moment that we should have together. But anyways, we are not talking about Nickelback or any songs today. We are actually going to be talking about math activities. If you want to look at the other video that I made about math, check it out somewhere up here. I'll link it above and you can check out that video that goes into more detail about what kind of concepts we're focusing on in the outdoor classroom in a preschool age classroom. So if you're interested in focusing on that, Head up there but today I want to talk more about the invitations that we can lay out and how we can support children in engaging with those activities so let's jump in so before we go into the beautiful invitations that I have for you all today that you can definitely take home and do them anywhere indoors or outdoors I want to talk to you a little bit about how to set up these and things that to consider before setting up these invitations. So let's start with that and then we'll go into the beautiful invitations that I have for you guys today. The first thing I wanna say is that when you're setting up an invitation in your class space, whether it be indoors or outdoors, really consider what the space looks like. What I like to do is set up invitations on a tabletop, on a log, on something that the, is on their eye level, so they are able to focus on those things. If it's on the forest floor like it is here, you're probably going to have children step on it. The invitation is going to be lost. So. That's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would like to say is that really consider what the children are interested in. I am really play-based and Reggio inspired classroom. So I follow the child's lead on all of these things. So if I'm noticing children are interested in math, like measuring or sorting or counting, that calls it out in my brain that I need to make an invitation about that. So really focus on what the children are telling you they're interested in and make invitations that go along with those. The third thing I wanna say is think about when you wanna lay these invitations out. I feel like some people think that they have to lay out invitations at just certain times of their day and allow children to engage and engulf, engulf themselves, if that's a word, we're gonna go with it. Um, but like really provoke and like focus on something that they're really interested in. Uh, and they do it only in a part of their day. What I would strongly suggest if you're an outdoor classroom like I am, set it out right at arrival. So when the child comes into the classroom, they see this beautiful invitation that you've laid out and they're already interested in exploring it. You're not going to want to bring like wood or anything that's going to rot or mold outside, especially if you are a fully outdoor program, you really want to consider what materials you're bringing outside. Plastic is so much better for these. So consider bringing plastic materials out for your invitations if that's what you need. Glass materials are really great as well. And then think about the materials that you're going to be using for these invitations. Find things on your nature walk that are interesting to you. Find things on your nature walk that are interesting on the ch children. Take a nature walk with the children so then they can actually like show you things that they're interested in and make that part of your invitation. You want it to be full of wonder and encourage children to want to keep an eye and look at it and really focus on that material. So find stuff that they're interested in and you're interested in. Loose parts are going to be your best friend. So really think about keeping all of your indoor stuff indoors and really focus on what you have in your neighborhood or in your outdoor classroom. Lastly, I wanted to just touch on that I feel like sometimes us as teachers are always wanting to rush through things and have something for our curriculum each week and change it out. So with any of these math invitations that I'm going to show you today, you can leave them out for weeks. You can leave them out for one week. You can leave them out for like four weeks, whatever you might want to do. Really think about what the children are interested in. And if you're seeing children come back to this invitation, make it again, keep it out for them to explore with. If you're noticing children aren't interested in your invitation that you've laid out, then change it. See what's missing from that invitation that's making it less enticing for them. Or maybe they're just not interested in that type of math concept right now and that's okay. So really find activities that are interesting for them and if they're interested in it, 
keep it out until they're not, right? We don't have to feel like we have to change everything out. I don't know who told us that we had to do that, but like, girl, we don't have to do it. We can do whatever we want. All right, let's get into the invitations. And this is just some of the stuff that I'll use to set up those invitations. Okay, so the first things I wanna show you are shape activities that you can do. And I'm going to show you some things that you can use to do this and give you some ideas if you don't have these materials in your backyard or in your neighborhood. So these are two activities I have. The first one, you will need some sort of, some sort of berry like this. These are like some gushy berries, or you can use English ivy if you have that, something that they can like lash. You can also use pine cones, those are also great. And then you'll need some sticks. So I have some sticks here. So what I would do to set up this invitation is lay out these uh, berries and the sticks on a piece of table, a piece of table, a table, and then put some shapes together just like this to just show them that what they can create with this stuff and I'll show you it when I'm done but this is definitely what I'm going to do first is just have a shape made for them and then lay out shape pictures so then the children can really think about different shapes that they can make the next activity that I have is still on shapes right because we're doing two activities for shapes you'll need a piece of paper and a marker and then if you have a laminator if you're in an indoor setting don't worry about this but if you're outdoors you're probably going to want to laminate it and you're going to draw a picture of a shape on your paper and think about the simple shapes that the children are going to be already able to name the other thing i like to do is write down the word and write the word for it so then they can start doing that literacy part of it. So I'll write triangle because I just drew a triangle. All right, so this would be what I would put out and I would again put a bunch of different shape pictures and shape piece placemats for them to use and then I would have some loose parts. So I have some acorn tops, some sticks, some of these like amazing things here. And I'll just leave these out for them to explore with and then they'll be able to use those to make their own shapes with. All right, now let's talk a little bit about numbers and counting. So obviously the first thing we're going to want to focus on is counting portion of it. So I like to put out sticks and then different number pictures like this one on a leaf. You can write it on sticks, you can write numbers on uh, rocks, anything like that, just to engage them with the number and then finding how many. What I did with this leaf was I wrote the number on the front and on the back I made five dots. It's hard to see because it's like the five is coming through, but I made five dots. So when they're laying down, they can look at the dots and count the dots to figure out how many sticks they have to find. And if you have children that have already mastered the counting part to figure out what the number is, they can just look at the number that you have written on the leaf and count that amount and put those into stacks or put them on top. So what I would do is I would leave this on, I would find one, two, three, four, five. And then I would put that on top of there and model that for them and lay it out that way so then they have a bunch of different numbers that they can engage with and have a bunch of loose parts that they can use those with. I have a couple of children in my class that are super interested in addition. I have older kids in my class that are fives. So what I like to do is I like to have a kind of like a sorting tray like this one. So it has two spots in it and the child can use this to count with. So what I would do again is put the number that I have, five, in one of the um, container like bowls. And then on the other side, I would do the same thing, write another number here, like let's say one. So then it's an easy peasy thing. And then on the back, again, I'm going to draw a picture of a circle one. So then if they need to, they can come back and look at that circle. So we have a one. It's really hard to see. These leaves are a little bit wet. So I would recommend like 
bringing your leaves inside to dry. And then what they can use is an, any loose parts that you have. Here's like some sticks that I have here. You can also use acorn tops that I have here and they can use those to put that number into the corresponding um, bowl. So if I have a five, I'm going to drop in five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I have a one and then I'll put this one in one. And then what they can do is count those all together and figure out what five plus one is. So then they could go one, two, three, four, five, six. Five plus one equals six. So that's a great way to help those older kids that are interested in engaging with addition. You can make it subtraction if you want to. Anything you want to just like help support them. I love these containers for that reason. The other thing I want to mention is that some teachers, especially like kids that are going into kindergarten, are wanting their students to be able to um, count by five to count by ten. So grouping different numbers, right? So we want to help support that in our classroom in a play-based way. We don't want to like have them sit down and just like count by tens, twenties, thirties, forties. You can do this really organically in your class. We do this in our group circle by like just counting to 100 by 10. So we go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And that's just modeling how to count to 100. If you want to help support them in counting or grouping different numbers, what I do is I find another one of these containers. So this has three different slots for them. And then they can put fives or tens or ones in each slot to figure out what one plus one plus one is or five, five, five. So same thing as the before, we're going to put the number in or t on top. So we're gonna count by fives. So I'll put a number here in front of me and then I can put five things inside of each of the containers. And then the children can use this to count if they want to. They can just group them by fives and just have a bunch of fives in this. It's really up to them and up to you how you want this provocation to go. It's just really letting them explore the numbers this way. Okay, if you're at a loss for how to make measuring more engaging and less like, okay, we're gonna measure this and see how long this is. And you want to do it outside and really have children engage with those materials all that i suggest bringing out is a measuring tape any type of measuring tape that they can use that is safe for them to use that is long enough for them to use measuring sticks are also great and just leave that on the table with a bunch of different materials and let them measure it if you want to take it one step further you can even bring a piece of paper outside and have them write down how long different things are if you want them to measure six you can do that and then put the number a line underneath it and then they can measure that um another thing you can do to make it play-based is Put this in the mud kitchen put measuring tapes or measure or i mean measuring cups and measuring spoons in the mud kitchen that way they're able to interact and play and engage with those materials then they'll have that too all right my dears that's all i have for you today i feel like i could go on and on and on and on and on and on you know but that's all we have time for and also it's just been nice to hang out with you guys so if you like this video like it, subscribe to my channel, and we can hang out more often. I post videos Tuesdays and Fridays every week, so we hear here all the time, y'all. We're always here in the forest. Um, have a great rest of your day. So grateful for you all, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.